Everybody's got a book and, and want to sing along. It's 110. Some glad morning we shall see Jesus in the air. Coming after you and me, joys are to share. What a rejoicing that will be when the saints shall rise. Heading for the jubilee yonder in the skies. Oh, what singing, singing, oh, what shouting, shouting on that happy morning when we all shall rise. Oh, what glory, hallelujah, when we meet our blessed Savior in the Now I almost see all the saints dead Rising for that jubilee that is just ahead In the twinkling of an eye changed with them to be All the living saints to fly to that jubilee Oh, what singing, oh, what shouting On that happy morning when we all shout Savior in the skies. When with all the heavenly host we begin to sing, singing in the Holy Ghost how the heavens will ring, me and sir will join the song, with him we shall be. Praising Christ to ages long, heaven's jubilee. Oh, what singing, oh, what shouting, on that happy morning when we all shall rise. Oh, what glory, hallelujah, when we meet our blessed Savior in the sky. 346 at the bottom first twilight is still in over the sea shadows are falling dark on the lee born on the night winds voices of your comes from that far off shore far away beyond the starless skies where thy love light never never dies Gleam of a mansion filled with delight, sweet, happy home so bright. Voices of loved ones, songs of the past, still linger around me while life shall last. Lonely I wandered, sadly I roamed. Far off home, far away beyond the starless skies, where the love light never, never dies. Gleam of a mansion filled with delight, sweet happiness. 
happy home so bright. Come in the twilight, come, come to me, bring in some message over the sea, cheer in my pathway while here I roam. Far off home, far away, beyond the starless skies, where thy love light never, never dies. Gleam of the mansion filled with delight, sweet, happy home, so We'll do the one on the top. I know my name is there. Yeah. My name is in the book of life. Oh, bless the name of Jesus. I rise above all doubt and strife and read my title clear. I know, I know, my name is there. I know, I know, my name is written there. My name was stood with sinners lost and bore a painful record. But by his blood the Savior crossed and placed it on his roll. I know. I know my name is there, I know, I know, my name is written there. While others climb to worldly strife to carve a name of honor, high up in heaven's book of life, my name is written there. I know, I know, my name is there. I know, I know, my name is written there. Thank you, Lord. Oh, man, well, I hope you do know your name is written there. Uh, you say, how can I know? John said, these things are written that you may know. And we're through saved by faith. If we're saved by faith, and then uh, we're saved by believing the Word. The Bible said, uh, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. And it's not by feeling. There'll be feeling when you get saved. There'll be some feeling there. I'd hate to have something I couldn't feel, wouldn't you? Uh, but there will be some feeling, and there is feeling. And uh, there's nothing like the presence of the Lord uh, intervening in your life and getting prayers answered and so forth. But anyway, it's good to be back to church tonight. And I was sitting here looking at the mountain up there, and you know, it's just about over, and uh, we're going into the fall. Uh, this is the last week of August, and it won't be long till leaves will be a turning, and then uh, they'll fall off, and then it'll be a frosting and snowing and so forth. But uh, maybe the Lord will come before then. If he does, I'll be ready to go. And if he don't, I'll uh, be, out, uh, be able to be out to the house of the Lord. I got your Bibles tonight while you're turning. Uh, we're going to. Uh, we're going to ask John to come up here and pray with us. Where are you? No, I'm good. Our dear, gracious, loving, heavenly Father, Lord, again, we thank you, Lord, for the privilege, Lord, just to be back here, Lord, again tonight. 
Lord, we do ask you, Lord, to forgive us, Lord, of our sins. Lord, we fail, Lord, and come short. Lord, we ask, Lord, just to get everything out of the way. Lord, here tonight, but that we can come and worship, Lord, with you, Lord, in spirit and in truth. Lord, we ask, Lord, to bless each and every one that's here, Lord, in their own special way. Lord, you know each heart. Lord, you know each heart's desire here tonight. Those are sick, Lord, those that's lost loved ones this week. Lord, we ask, Lord, to touch, Lord, there. Lord, we know you are the great physician. Lord, you can make all things new. Lord, if it be your will, Lord, we ask, Lord, just touch those that's lost. Lord, before it's everlasting too late. Bless our pastor, Lord, as he stands. Lord, as he breaks the bread of life to us. Lord, just give him more that he stands in need of. We'll give you the praise and glory for all. For it's in your blessed holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, we appreciate that. Have your Bibles turn back with us to the book of the Revelation, chapter 21. Uh, we want to talk to you a little while tonight on some new things. Uh, you know, Chad's been a teaching Sunday school on the book of Hebrews. Uh, the book of Hebrews is a book of better things. Uh, uh, and uh, the, the cha 20, first, 21st chapter of the Revelations is a chapter of new things. If you've got a Schofield Bible, the reference on, uh, there at the top will say uh, the seven new things. And there is seven things that uh, will be made anew, but that's not all. I mean, the, the Lord's going to make this thing new. Uh, the world we see now, uh, it's got a lot of beauty in it, but that ain't nothing to what it'll be. Uh, during the millennium, and even the millennium, uh, the, this new heaven, new earth will surpass that. Uh, notice what it said in uh, chapter 21 and verse 1. It said, And I saw, John said, I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first, first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. Now he said, uh, he said, I saw a new heaven. Now the devil has been uh, defeated. The battle of Armageddon has been fought. Uh, and the devil has been cast into the lake of fire where the beast and the false prophet are. And things are going to change now. I mean, they're forever. Uh, let me remind you that the devil is forever going to be uh, done away with. Uh, and uh, here the Lord is going to uh, make things new. And he's making them new uh, for his people. Uh, you remember, and keep this in mind, John chapter 14, uh, the Bible said, Jesus said this, he said, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. He said, I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go, uh, he, said, and prepare, he said, I'll come again and receive you unto myself, uh, that where I am, there you may be also. Now, what he was talking about, as I told you the other night, uh, the Jewish wedding when a, when a man and a woman was espoused, and then the man uh, would go back to his father's house and he would prepare a place uh, for him and his bride to live. Uh, that's just what Jesus done when he left. He went back to the father's house and he's been a preparing a place for his bride, uh, the New Testament church, the people of God, uh, and then we're, we're seeing this come about. And John said, I saw a new heaven. We're not going to say much about heaven tonight. Uh, <coughs> excuse me, but because we'll be talking about it a little later on. Uh, but there is a thing of heaven. Everything has its opposite. Uh, the opposite of day is night. The opposite of uh, uh, bitter is sweet. The opposite of light is darkness. And you see the opposite of hell is heaven. And if there's a hell, there's a heaven. And uh, certainly there is a hell. And there's a heaven that... Uh, uh, that the uh, people of God ought to be able to look forward to. I read the other night where that this Chinese man had got saved, and he said this. He said the Buddhists uh, talk a lot about hell because that's where they're going. And he said Christians talk a lot about heaven because that's where they're going. Uh, but you don't hear much talk about it anymore, do you? Uh, you don't hear much talk about people are going to heaven. Uh, but I'll tell you, this is reality. This is not something that's dreamed up. Uh, not a uh, figment of imagination. Uh, it's not something you just get in your head. Uh, but it's as real as the car you're sitting in tonight. It is real as the air you're breathing and the God that's looking down on you. And he said, I saw a new heaven. And, it, and he's going to make all things new. And we'll say, uh, say a little more about uh, heaven uh, a little later on. Uh, but he said a new earth. Did you realize that uh, he's going to make a new earth? Now, uh, uh, the Bible tells us that, and I believe that uh, this earth is going to be burned over, purified, and cleansed because that uh, the earth that was created, he created the earth, the Bible said, 
in Genesis 1 and 1, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. And he created this thing. And then the next verse says, And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face. And uh, then the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters, and then the earth began to be reformed. Uh, they, the, when God created this thing, it was a, uh, it was a glorious thing. There was something happened. I don't know. Uh, but there was a lot of debate. There's a lot of, uh, uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, books are, are written on what happened uh, between Genesis chapter 1 and, uh, uh, and verse 1 and between verse 1 and 2. I don't believe God would uh, create an imperfect thing. And most people believe, most theologians believe that uh, when Satan was cast out of heaven and then it brought a change upon the earth. I don't know. Uh, but I do know that the air, the Bible said, uh, he's going, he's, uh, John said, I saw a new heaven and a new earth. And this earth that he's talking about, uh, did you realize that God promised this earth to the meek? Uh, God told Abraham, he said, this earth is yours and your seeds forever and ever. God told David, he said that uh, his throne would be continually forever. And uh, as the earth is going to be destroyed, uh, the, uh, it's going to be burned over, it's going to be cleansed, and it's going to be refurbished uh, because that... Uh, well, let me read you some scripture uh, over here in the book of Second uh, Peter. In the book of Second Peter, uh, Peter talks about this. Uh, you remember God uh, purged the earth one time with water uh, when he brought the flood upon the earth and then... Uh, he purged the earth. Man was a sinner. And the sin come up before God. And the Bible said that he saw that every imagination of man was continually evil. And God sent a flood upon the earth and destroyed uh, mankind, the, the living creatures that uh, he had created. But the Bible said, uh, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. And Noah and his family were saved uh, during, uh, through the flood. And, uh, and the ark that he built, he took the animals in the ark and so forth. Uh, but God purged the earth, and he said, I won't do it anymore. Uh, he said, I'll put a rainbow in the sky. He told uh, Noah, he said, I'll put a bow in the sky. Uh, because every time it started raining, Noah no doubt would have been afraid uh, that there was another, uh, another flood coming. And God said, Noah, when you see that uh, bow, uh, you'll know that I'm not going to destroy uh, this, uh, this earth with a flood anymore. Uh, but here in the book of the, uh, the book of Second Peter chapter 3, and, and notice what that is said uh, in verse 4. And, uh, and saying, uh, well, let me read verse 3. Knowing this, that in the last times, scoffers uh, walking after their own lust, and saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since our fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were uh, from the beginning of the creation. Uh, for they willingly are ignorant of, uh, by the word of God. The heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of the water, and in the water, uh, whereby the world after then has been uh, overflowed with water, perished. Now, uh, talking about the flood here. Uh, but notice that but the heavens and the earth which are now by the same word are kept in store, are uh, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. And, uh, and he said that uh, uh, down in uh, verse, uh, uh, verse 10, uh, but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. In the night of uh, the heaven shall uh, pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with favorite heat. Uh, the earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, uh, what manner of person ought you to be uh, in all holy conversation and godliness? Uh, you see, God's going to cleanse this earth by fire. And uh, it's gonna, he's going to make it anew. And the Bible said uh, that there would be no more sea. Uh, you know, sea is, uh, uh, sea is, a, uh, uh, it is a, a, a sign of separation. I remember in, during the Second World War, I was just a little old boy. I had uncles on my mama's side and on my dad's side too. I was, that was in the army. And I've seen my grandmother say it and uh, worry and cry, uh, worrying about their boys that's overseas. And uh, they couldn't hear from them. You see, sea, uh, the sea is a place of separation, uh, but they won't be any more sea. Uh, they, the, the world is uh, covered, the, the land area is covered uh, by two-thirds of it by water. 
and uh, therefore it is a uh, uh, there's a lot of mysteries out in that sea. Uh, you, you you know all of you know and have heard about the Bermuda Triangle, uh, where ships disappear, where airplanes disappear. Uh, you say, preacher, what happens? I I, I don't have any idea. I don't know. Uh, but I know these mysteries out in the sea. And sea, a lot of times, uh, uh, waters uh, will be used for borders and uh, for lines. Probably uh, some of you that own property up and down this holler here. And the creek that's running up and down is on your deed. Uh, it is a property line. Uh, it is a place that it divides up. And God said there'd be no more sea. Uh, there'll be no more sea. There'll be uh, the earth, and uh, there won't be any reason for uh, the sea. I mean, uh, uh, you know, I, I believe that we'll, uh, I don't believe we'll be eating fish and shrimp and lobster and so forth, uh, but I believe we'll be eating fruit. Uh, there's going to be plenty of fruit. And besides all that, if you don't want to, you won't even have to eat. Uh, because uh, our life, we don't survive. On what we eat, we survive uh, on Him. The Bible said we live, we move, we have our being in Him, and we have eternal life. Now, uh, the tree of life is going to be in heaven, but uh, we won't have to eat of it uh, because the Bible says Christ, who is our life, shall appear. Uh, we shall appear also. Uh, but the Bible said here, John said, I saw a new heaven and a new earth. And uh, I, I, John saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, uh, coming down from God out of heaven, uh, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. I mean, this is the city. Uh, this is the place that God uh, has provided for his people. Uh, this is the place that Jesus has made uh, for his bride. He went to prepare a place, and here uh, it is coming down. He said, I saw it coming down out of heaven, prepared as a bride, adorned for her husband. Uh, you know, a bride is, uh, uh, you can tell that uh, probably uh, there's something about a bride that, uh, uh, that, uh, I, that uh, I mean, uh, there is a, kind of, I guess, a glow about it. I heard one man say that he never uh, saw a bride that wasn't pretty. I've not either. I've seen some that's barely made it, but uh, they've, uh, they're, all, uh, they're all pretty. And uh, we, uh, uh, we, we know that this uh, city uh, is prepared. And, and John said, I heard a vo great voice out of heaven saying, uh, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, or the tent of God is with men. And he shall dwell with them, and they shall be his people. And God himself shall be with them and be their God. Uh, now he said he is going to dwell. He's going to, uh, he's going to set up camp with them uh, because he is their God. I mean, we have never saw uh, the Lord face to face. Uh, we've never seen him. Uh, but then we'll be able uh, to be with him. Uh, you know, in the Old Testament, uh, God dwelt among his people. He dwelt outside of the uh, camp in the, in the day by the cloud and the night by a pillar of fire. And then in the New Testament, uh, he dwells on the inside of them. Uh, but here, when this new Jerusalem comes down, uh, he's going to dwell among them. He's going to be uh, uh, just like one of us. He's, we're going to be uh, just like him because uh, uh, we are going to have a body uh, like his and and the Bible said in verse 4, And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. There's a lot of things that uh, causes people to weep. I mean, people weep at different times. Sometimes uh, when they get happy, they weep. When they hear good news, they weep. I've seen, uh, I've seen uh, uh, babies born to families. And uh, I, I went to the hospital one time, and uh, this lady was having a baby. And when the... Husband, they put that baby in, in his arms. He, uh, he wept like a little baby. Uh, and uh, it caused him, but I don't know. Hey, folks, listen. Uh, when they laid that baby in your arms at the hospital, if it didn't do something to you, uh, I don't know. You need to take aspirin or something because uh, there's, uh, there's nothing like it. Uh, but God's going to be with us, and we're going to be with him. And it's not going to be just a little while. 
I mean, we come to church, we have some good service, we feel the presence of the Lord. Uh, sometimes we get off of praying or uh, riding down the road and we feel the prayer, and boy, I tell you, it's good. Uh, but we're going to be with Him we, all the time, 100% of the time. And God shall wipe away all their tears from their eyes, and there'll be no more crying. I mean, uh, you know, a little boy or girl get out here and they'll fall on the asphalt, got skinned up, and, uh, and, uh, and somebody will pet them and pick them up and, uh, and love on them and pet them and say good things to them, and uh, it, it helps. And uh, there's going to be a lot of people that has had tears in this life. Things have uh, tormented them and things have uh, disappointed them and things have uh, really ruined their life uh, seemingly. Uh, but God's going to wipe away them tears. I'll tell you, when we see Him, I've heard people say, when I see the Lord, I'm going to ask Him uh, why this happened and why that happened. I really doubt that. I really doubt that. I, re I believe that. Uh, you know, Paul said, For I reckon that the sufferings of this present world are not worthy to be compared with the glory uh, that's going to be revealed in us. And I, I believe when we see Jesus... I believe when we see the place that he has prepared for us, I believe we'll be so awestruck. I believe that we'll be so uh, thrilled that we'll never remember uh, things that are back in this world. And he said, and there shall uh, be no more death. Uh, you know, death is a sad thing. I, I've, I've, uh, I've been to a lot of funerals in my time, in my ministry. I've conducted a lot of funerals. I've seen uh, some sad funerals. I've seen some. Uh, uh, I've seen some funerals where uh, that it didn't like, it look like anybody cared. Uh, but death is still real. Uh, I hadn't been a, a pastor long, just a, a few weeks, and Hawkins Brothers Funeral Home called me from up Burnsville, and they said, uh, "We've got a body that we're going to have to bury, and we want to have a funeral. Can you come uh, and conduct a service?" And I said, "Yeah." And I went, and we walked back up in the woods, back on a ridge, and they had the grave dug, and there was a man there, and there was me, and the funeral directors was all that was there. And I said to myself, boy, I tell you, uh, nobody uh, seemed to care, uh, but the Lord cares. And you know death, uh, hit brain sorrow. Everybody sitting here has got somebody uh, that, is, uh, that it is hurt on the inside. Uh, but when we get there, uh, there's not going to be any more death. Uh, you'll never have to go down to the hospital to see anybody. Uh, you'll never have to walk off from anybody and wonder if that's the last time that you're seeing. I remember, and I don't know why I remember it so good, uh, but I had a funeral one time, and I really didn't even know the man and the woman. Uh, but they'd been, uh, been married probably uh, 50 or 60 years, and we had the funeral, and uh, and uh, and uh, I went around, shook hands with everybody, and uh, that, that they was uh, uh, filling in the grave. And the man got up, and he looked, and as he went by, uh, he waved like that. And that always stuck with me, uh, because I said, one of these days, uh, there'll be no more death, and you won't have to wave at anybody. Uh, you won't have to say goodbye. You won't have to turn around at uh, the graveyard and look back uh, because there'll be no dying. There'll not be one hearse. There'll not be one funeral home. There'll not be one bouquet of flowers laid on the ground uh, where that somebody got killed in an automobile accident or where they was buried because there'll be no more death, uh, neither sorrow. Uh, you know, there's a lot of sorrow down here. Uh, there's a lot of sorrow in, in this world. I mean... Uh, uh, there's, uh, you look around and there's misery on every corner. Uh, you go to the hospital, you go down uh, to the rest home, you look on the street. Boy, I tell you, uh, uh, I don't know about you, but I can drive uh, through a town in the wintertime, especially when it's cold and rainy and the wind is blowing, and you see them homeless people, and they're hovered up somewhere trying to stay warm. Uh, and uh, and there's a lot of sorrow. I've I've t I've sat down and talked to uh, little children where mom's left or dad's left and tried uh, to comfort them and tell them uh, that it wasn't because of them, but uh, things that happened that they'd lay. Uh, but there'll be no more of that. Uh, nobody will ever have to comfort anybody. Nobody will ever have to slip up and slip their arm around somebody and say, "I know how you feel, and I'm praying for you," uh, because there'll be no. More 
more sorrow, uh, neither crying. You know, sorrow brings crying, uh, but there'll be no more crying. Uh, every t- everybody uh, at one time or another uh, probably has to cry. Uh, you know, our Lord cried. Uh, he wept. The Bible said uh, that he wept. Uh, he wept at the grave of Lazarus. The uh, Bible said uh, when he went to see about Lazarus, and people say that he wept because that uh, of unbelief of people. Uh, that may be so, but I really believe uh, that in his human body, uh, Lazarus was his friend. I believe his heart was touched. I believe that uh, he felt that uh, he, he felt that uh, uh, that separation from a friend, and I believe Jesus wept. I mean, he cried literal tears. Uh, you know, when he was going into Jerusalem at the last time, uh, he stopped on a hill and he said, Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how oft would I have gathered thee together as a hen gathereth her chicks? Uh, but you would not. And he wept over Jerusalem. Uh, when he was on the cross and uh, there they was crucifying, and the Bible said, I did he cried, oh, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? If it's all right for our Lord to cry, I believe it'd be all right for me and you to cry when it's necessary. Uh, when, when it comes, but there'll be no more crying, uh, neither there shall be any more pain. Uh, boy, there's a lot of misery in the world. Uh, there's a lot of pain in the world. I see people all the time. Uh, they have physical ailments that, uh, that it's just like a, a, a thorn in the side that. Uh, that it, 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 it hurts them all the time. Uh, but there'll be no more pain. Uh, you'll not hear anybody uh, saying, I need some medicine. I need to see the doctor. Uh, you'll not hear anybody say, I never slept a wink last night because that uh, I hurt all night. No, sir. Uh, there'll not be any more pain. This physical body uh, knows pain. But I'll tell you, that glorified body, uh, it'll not know pain because they won't be. Hey, listen, there won't be anything there to cause pain. And he said, for the former things are passed away. Uh, did you realize that? Uh, the former things, the things that uh, we got our mind on are passed away. Uh, but... Uh, uh, and, and let me hurry on. But he that sat upon the throne said, uh, Behold, I make all things new. I remember that. He made heaven new. He made earth new. He made you new. And he made your thoughts, your attitude, uh, your demeanor, everything about you uh, new. Hey, we'll be a new man. Have you ever uh, Have you ever wished you could just start over and and uh, uh, it's be a, a, a superman or something? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, but uh, when we get there, uh, he, uh, we're going to be a new person. E- even when we get saved, the Bible said, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Uh, but he's not going to be a new creature uh, there. He's just going to be new. Uh, God's going to give him a glorified body. He said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Right, uh, for these words are true and faithful. Uh, Jesus said you could believe them. And he said unto me, it is done. Boy, I'm, uh, I'm glad it's done. I'm glad he's going to wind this thing up. Uh, they, there's no more devil. There's no more meanness. There's no more ungodliness. Uh, there's no more hatred. There's no more uh, malice. There's no more uh, uh, war. The, I mean, uh, all, of that is, uh, all of that is over. Uh, it is done. And the will of God. You remember when Jesus, the disciples, came to him one time. And Jesus, they heard him praying. And they said, Lord, teach us to pray. And he said, when, uh, I say, when you pray, I pray in this manner, saying, Our Father which is in the heaven, hallowed be thy name. And then uh, we pray for this time, thy kingdom come, uh, thy shall be done on earth as it is on, in heaven. And we pray for that kingdom, and it is a coming. He said, he said it, is, uh, it is done. I am Alpha and Omega. Alpha is the beginning of the uh, Hebrew alphabet. And Omega is the last. And you see, uh, he's first and he's last. And he's everything in between. I mean, when we look back into, uh, uh, into eternity uh, past and uh, we uh, look till it, to, till it just dims out and you can't see any farther and God was there. And you look into the future until... Uh, you go so far that it would, uh, uh, it would just about explode your brain. And God is there uh, because He's the beginning and He's the end and He's everything in between. 
uh, before they was a world, before they was a molecule, uh, before they was an atom, before they was anything God was. I mean, nobody has ever found the cradle of God, and nobody will ever write the epitaph for God, uh, because He is forever and ever and ever. And He said, of uh, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is the thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. Uh, you remember with Jesus when he was uh, uh, preaching the Sermon on the Mount. He said, Blessed is he that hungereth and thirsteth after righteousness, for he shall be filled. And folks, I want you to know, I don't believe he's talking about sinner people. Uh, because uh, a baby don't hunger and it don't thirst till it's born. And man don't thirst after God until uh, he knows God. Uh, but Jesus said here, yeah, uh, he said, I'm going uh, I'm to be your drink. I'm going to be your food. I'm going to be your life. I'm going to be uh, whatever. And he said, he that overcometh shall uh, inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. Uh, will you say, well, preacher, uh, what have we got to overcome? Bible said over in, in 1 John chapter uh, 5 and verse 4, who is he that overcometh? Who is he that overcometh? Who, over, who is the overcomer but one uh, that believes that Jesus is the Son of God? I mean, he is overcome. Oh, you say, preacher, what has he overcome? Uh, he's overcome the flesh and the devil uh, because that he trusts in what God has done. And folks, listen, I say it, and I say it, and I say it. There's nothing you and I could do to go to heaven. The only thing we can do is trust in what Jesus done. And he's done proved that uh, God has accepted the sacrifice and the priesthood of the Lord Jesus. And when he sat down on the right hand of God, uh, that showed us that uh, everything was accepted. Everything was, uh, uh, was already done. And salvation was complete. And he said, and then he says in verse 8, But the fearful and the unbelieving... I mean, how many people really believe about Jesus? I don't know where this is true or not, and I don't know how they figured it. But I read in the world's population that a little over 1% even claims they're Christians. And everybody that says they're saved, I really don't believe they're saved. And that cuts it way down, don't it? When you think about it, there's so many people that is unbelieving, so many cults, so many uh, different religions. And uh, you say, preacher, if they're earnest and honest in them, I believe that it'll be all right. I was preaching in a church one night, and uh, I was a preaching, and this man raised his hand. And I mean, I started to say, go quietly. That's what they always said to me at the school. Uh, but I didn't, and I stopped, and... He said, Preacher, I ought to say something. I said, all right, what are you going to say? He said, I believe that a man is honest in his belief will go to heaven, really, no matter what he believes. I said, you really believe that? He said, yeah. I said, tonight, if you went home and you had a bad headache and you got up and you didn't want to disturb the family and uh, you just uh, got a little old damn flashlight and looked in the medicine cabinet and uh, get, get you an aspirin, but instead you got some strychnine. And you took that, you'd be as honest as you could be in it. And I said, you really believe if you was honest in that, that he wouldn't kill you? No, sir. He'd kill you as dead as a doornail. Uh, but no matter what you believe. And I'll tell you, as many religions as they are in the world, uh, they ain't but one. Uh, I read where they was four, uh, 4,000 uh, different religions in the world today. You say, how many is wrong? 39,999. Uh, they is one. Jesus said, I am the door. I am the way. Uh, there is no other way. No man cometh unto the Father except by me. And that's the only way a man will get to heaven. The, uh, the abominable and the murderers. You say, and you know, uh, you don't have to shoot a man to, uh, to be a murderer. Jesus said that if you hate somebody, without a cause, I mean, you can be a murderer in your heart. 
You can murder somebody's integrity and who they are by a tongue. He said, these murderers ain't going to be in heaven. Uh, in heaven. You say, you mean somebody's killed, somebody won't go to heaven? No, sir. Now, I'll tell you that a man can get forgiveness of killing somebody. Uh, he can get forgiveness the same as any sin. Uh, and, uh, but uh, uh, you remember over there in the book of Galatians, uh, uh, Paul was enumerating some of the uh, people that wasn't going to heaven. And then uh, he, said, uh, he said after that, he said, And such were some of you, but now are you washed. And some of you sitting here today, I mean, if you, uh, if you looked in this Bible, there wouldn't be no way you could go to heaven uh, without somebody standing in your place. And you're looking at one of them uh, because that, I, I mean, I've been so ungodly in my time, uh, but the Lord forgive me of that. And don't let the devil beat you up on your past. Don't let the devil beat you up on um, what has been going on uh, in your life because uh, he'll destroy you as long as he can keep that uh, hanging over you. Uh, and then uh, you'll never amount to much for God. Uh, but you see, uh, when you get if He forgives you, what what does it matter where somebody else forgives you or not? And uh, they won't. Uh, a few years ago, men and women's gone somewhere in Scott's morning yard, and no boy I went to school with. Uh, he belonged to Jehovah Witness, and they come down. He come down, and they stopped and was witnessing to uh, Scott and. Uh, uh, and trying to get, and Scott said, "Listen, my dad is a preacher." Said, "I don't believe like you." And they asked him, "Said, who is it?" And he told him. And I went to school with one of them boys. And Scott said he stayed there hour telling him what I'd done. I, I really didn't appreciate all that, uh, but uh, but that that happens. And people's not going to let uh, you forget what's happened in your life. And the devil's not going to let you forget what's happened in your life. But folks, listen. If God forgets, forgives you, He never remembers it anymore. It's not that He forgets it like you and I forget something. He chooses not to remember it anymore. And He can do that. And the Bible said, And the murderers and the whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars. You say, Preacher, how big a category do you have to be a liar to go to hell? I'm going to say this, and I say it in all kindness. I know how to say it. They probably ain't one here that ain't told a lie in the last year uh, in some way. You may not have just, uh, expressed one, but, uh, you know, it's sort of like Abraham uh, when he told uh, the king that Sarah was his sister. He told a half line, a half truth, because she was his half sister. But, uh, and sometimes, hey, listen, what the point I'm trying to make is we all fit in the same category. We're sinners. And when Jesus forgives us, he forgives us of all sin. He don't hold one back. He don't hold one back uh, to hold against us. And he said, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, uh, which is the second death. Now, they wasn't nobody that he was talking to here was going to, uh, to be put in the lake of fire, uh, but they're already there. Whosoever was not found written in the book of life uh, was cast into the lake of fire. Have you ever tried to imagine how it would be at that white throne of judgment? And people argue with God and say, Lord, uh, I know my name's in there somewhere. I made a profession when I was a little boy or a little old girl. I got baptized. I, I sung in a choir. I went on mission trips. And I done this and that. But they'd never got born again. And that didn't cut it. And folks, listen. Uh, they is a new heaven, a new earth. I love this earth. Uh, I, I'm glad. And, and I thank God that I wasn't born in a city. Uh, I've, I've heard them say, and I don't know, I guess this is the truth. Uh, these people, 50 and 60 year old, it's never had their feet on dirt. It's always been on concrete or asphalt. I mean, that's sad to me. Now, I don't like to go barefooted, but I'm glad uh, that I can get out and get on the ground and get through these old mountains. Not like I used to, but I'm glad. I, I thank God was extra good to me to let me born 
uh, here in these Blue Ridge Mountains and growed up here. And uh, you say, well, preacher, you're a hillbilly. I, I don't care. You can call me a hillbilly. And uh, 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 it, it don't matter to me. I went to Pennsylvania one time and work, and well, worked in California some, and they made fun of me all the time and uh, the way I talked and the way I done, but I really didn't care. I wouldn't have swapped with them. I'll tell you right now, uh, I wouldn't swap with them. They'd even ask me, say, where are you from? I'd say, Boston, Massachusetts. And, uh, the, the, of course, they didn't believe that. Uh, but uh, they said I talk funny, and I said, I don't take half as funny as you folks do. And, but anyway, uh, I'm, I'm glad God let me be born here because I love uh, the country. I love the mountains. I love the people here. I mean, I think, it, uh, uh, I think I've got the finest people to be around of anywhere in the world. We've got the best water. We've got the prettiest scenery. Uh, we've got, to, I mean, just whatever. Uh, we've got the best. Folks, we are blessed beyond knowing right here where we're at. I mean, <laughs> uh, where else can you go out and grow a garden like we grow? Where else can you uh, get out and catch some fish or kill them as the squirrels or uh, go a deer hunting or turkey hunting or something? And where else can you get out and show your children the creation of God. Now, God made this, and God made this, and he made it like this and that. I tell you, we're blessed. Boy, it's good being good to be here. Uh, let us pray. Our Father, as we bow, we certainly appreciate the privilege of prayer. I appreciate your goodness, and Lord, do we appreciate your people being out uh, to your house. And Father, we pray, Lord, that the Holy Spirit of God, uh, Father, Lord, to stir our hearts. Lord, to move in every automobile. Uh, Lord, as they leave here, Lord, and uh, just let them feel how blessed they are. Uh, Lord, the devil may come by and say uh, that we're uh, pitiful and we're dead. And, uh, Lord, this is a hurting and that's a hurting. But, God, we're still blessed because we got you. Our Father, we pray to be with the sick. Father, Lord, be with them that have asked us to pray for them. And, Lord, be with our church. And, God, help us, uh, Lord, to make the right decisions, do the right thing for your honor and for your glory. And, Lord, for our betterment. And what's done, we'll praise you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. All right, Mike's going to come and uh, make some announcements. It's been good to be here. Uh, let me say this. You pray for Ben. He's going he's gonna to leave Friday. And uh, he had an accident and cut his hand pretty bad. Uh, but he's going to leave Friday for England. And he's going to be gone five weeks. He's going to work for three weeks and has to be in quarantine uh, for two weeks. And you pray for him. I mean, Ben's a help. Uh, he's really a help to me. He's a help to the church. We, uh, we appreciate him, and I know you do, but, and you pray for him. And I told him, be careful over there in England. There's a lot of foreigners over there, and uh, he'll have to watch himself. Good evening. Just got a couple of announcements, and then we'll let, get, let you go. Um, Cindy already put out a text, and we announced it Sunday. Um, if you have gifts for baby Emmy, Joe, Isaac, and Haley, uh, they'll be accepting those Sunday morning at the morning service. So bring those, and, and they decided not to have the, the baby shower because of the COVID junk going on. So uh, remember that. I know they'd like, like to have that and, and meet with everybody, but under the circumstances, just uh, if you've got a gift, bring it to them. That, they'll, they'll greatly appreciate it. Uh, don't forget Sunday school, 10 o'clock Sunday morning, worship service at 11. We've got a long prayer list. Uh, you all know who those folks are. Remember Amy Jo? Um, she was supposed to have her surgery. Uh, supposed to be yesterday. They moved it up to today, then again delayed it till next week. So let's, let's really remember that situation, okay? If nothing else, good night. God bless. Be careful going home.